Basic Education, Grade 12, Mathematics, Paper 1, November 2020. And in my first video, I've done Question 1. Right? And now in this video, I'm going to focus on Question 2. 2.1, given is the following arithmetic sequence, 7, x, y, and negative 11 to the infinity. You must find the values of x and y. Now, the minute they tell you it's arithmetic, you should go to your formula sheet, which is normally given in the exams, and you should know it will be this formula for arithmetic, for the term itself, and of course this one is for the sum. So those are the two formulae for an arithmetic sequence, and that should help me to solve this problem. Now, this example can be done in different ways, different methods, but I'm going to choose maybe the most easiest and most logical way to do it. Right? And that should be using that general formula, namely Tn equals to A plus N minus 1D. So that formula should be of great help. So what I do is, remember 7 is term 1, x is term 2, y is term 3, and negative 11 is term 4. So what I can do is I can then say term 4, which I know is minus 11. So in the next step, I'm going to replace term 4 with minus 11. A, of course, is the first term, right? And of course, 4 minus 1, d. Because remember, D is unknown. So therefore, I'm going to try and solve for D. So therefore, plus 3D. Right. Then take 7 to the left-hand side, and I get negative 18 equals to 3D. So therefore, my D is negative 6. And the moment I have D, it is of great help. So, to find X, the following should happen. Right. If I can just repeat this quickly then I know the first difference there, there's a second difference, and, sorry, that is the first difference. And I know this should be negative 6 throughout, because it is arithmetic, first difference. So, to get a negative 7, that means that it will have to be 7, and then, of course, something will have to happen to the x. X will have to take on a certain value, and X will have to take on the value of 1. Because 7, sorry, it's always the other way around. It's 1 minus 7 is negative 6. So therefore, it makes X a negative 1. Right, I mean a positive 1, sorry, my, my, my bad. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. So therefore x is 1. Then of course y, the same will happen here. So remember now, if I can put the 1 in there, of course, then I can do the same here, and I can say y is a negative 5. Because negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. So there we are. y is therefore negative 5. That's one way of doing it. Or you could have just said 7 plus what? So 7 plus a negative 6 is 1. 1 plus a negative 6 is negative 5. So there are different ways of doing it. But whatever method you choose, make sure you understand and make sure that the method makes sense. The next question is 2.2. Given is this quadratic pattern. Again, there's the keyword quadratic pattern, that is grade 11 stuff, and it's given as negative 3, 6, 27, and 60. Now, the minute you see the word quadratic, you should think immediately of second difference. There's got to be a second difference. So, the very first step you should do is, therefore, to write down the terms negative 3, 6, 27 and 60, and first determine the first difference. So what is 6 minus a negative 3? It is 9. 
27 minus 6, 21. 60 minus 27, 33. So that's what we call the first difference. Let's make a note of that. So that is the first difference. Then the second difference will be 21 minus 9 is 12. 33 minus 21 is 12. And if there is a second difference, which is the same, then this is definitely a quadratic pattern. So the formula you must remember is therefore that this 12, right, is normally called 2a. So 2a is equal to 12, so therefore a is 6. Then this 9 is usually 3a plus b. So 3a plus b is 9, a is already 6, so therefore b is negative 9. And then this value here is of course a plus b plus c equals to negative 3. So there you are. There's formula 1, there's formula 2, and there's formula 3. So those are the three formulas which you just got to know. Very important. So 2a is 12, 3a plus b is 9, and a plus b plus c is negative 3. Then do your substitution, and then you get c, 0. So now you've got a, you've got b, and you've got c. Now remember now, the quadratic equation or expression normally looks like this. But here we're dealing with n, so it will be a n squared plus b n plus c. And a we already know is a 6, and b we know is a negative 9. Right, and that is how, and of course c is 0. So therefore the answer is 6n squared minus 9. Right, so 2.2.3 show that the sum of the first n first differences of this pattern can be given by the sum equals to s 6n squared plus 3n. So the sum of the first differences, so that's your keyword. You need to look at the first differences. So there you are. Remember now, this is how we got to our first difference early on. This is how we got to our first difference. Now you must find the sum. Now it is still, now the first difference you will notice is arithmetic because there is a common difference. You will notice that 21 minus 9 and 33 minus 21 will give you a common difference of 12. So therefore this first difference here is in itself an arithmetic sequence. Now if they want sum to go to your formula sheet then you will notice it is definitely this formula for sum of an arithmetic sequence. So you write down that formula. Sum to n terms equals to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1b. And then do your substitution. So this, this formula here, so n is therefore unknown. So therefore it is n over 2. Now remember what is a people? A will be 9. So it's 2 times 9 plus, and n is still unknown, don't forget, n minus 1, of course, the common difference d is 12. Right. So that's what you should do here. Then the rest, of course, is just straightforward calculator work. So it's n over 2. This is 18. This is 12 times n, and 12 times negative 1. Right. Collect your like terms. So 18, of course, minus 12 is 6. So therefore, 12 uh, n plus 6. That's what you get. Right? And if you multiply in like that and like that, you should get the answer. So 2 into 12, 6. So 6 times 26 so n squared. And 2 into 6, 3 times n is 3 n. And there you are. There you do get the answer which was given. Right, so there you are. You have to prove that this is the sound, and there you've managed to do it. 
Now the next question 2.2.4 How many consecutive first differences were added to the first term of the quadratic pattern to obtain a term in the quadratic number pattern that has this value? So how many consecutive first differences were added? Right. So already we do have the general solution or the general term for this one. So therefore, this is maybe the best approach to do it. So remember Tn is that value which is given. And of course, this we already determined. Right? So we just add this value now. Right? Cool. So what we do is just divide by 3 right through. To simplify, factorize, and you'll get two different n values. And of course, you'll accept. Once you factorize or use the quadratic formula here, you'll get two answers. And of course, you choose n60, because it must be a whole number, and it must be positive.